Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Is the screen visible? <clears throat> Okay, so let's start quickly. What is the answer for the first one? <coughs> so what is the, the obvious thing? One you can say A is positive, B is negative, right? So A is positive, B is negative. That should be the answer. Okay. But how can you speak in terms of the magnitude? Magnitude of A is greater than magnitude of B. So how do you decide that? Or what decides the magnitude? Number of field lengths. Yes. The number of field lengths. It's crowded for A and less crowded for B. So A is the right answer. Second one, the kinetic energy of an electron which is accelerated in the potential difference of 100 volts. Answer. So it is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 into 10 square. That is 1.6 into 10 power minus 17 Q. Right, this will be the answer. What is the unit of specific resistivity? Specific resistivity is that is resistivity only. Actually, it should have been either resistivity or specific resistance. <clears throat> so, what is the unit of it? It is ohm centimeter. The galvanometer has 30 divisions, has current sensitivity of 20 microampere per division. If the resistance, if it has a resistance of 25 ohm, how will you convert it into an ampere measuring up to one ampere? Find the shunt that is to be used. 
so how do you do it s is equal to ig into capital g divided by i minus ig so what is the galvan meter current that is flowing full scale deflection current so to get the full scale deflection current multiply these two so that give you 600 into 10 power minus 6 600 into 10 power minus 6 the resistance of the galvan meter is 25 divided by i minus ig so 1 minus 600 into 10 power minus 6 this can be approximated to 1 itself so 25 into 6 is going to be 1 to 3 1 to 3 into 10 power minus 4 or it is going to be 0 0.0154 and that should be C. <coughs> okay. At a certain place, the horizontal component is root 3 times its vertical component and the angle of the stand delta is equal to BV divided by BH. So root 3 times BH divided by BH. Cancel this and this. So delta is equal to 60 degrees. Pi by 3. Assume that. Uh, sir. Uh, tell me. Oh, sorry. Sir, horizontal, horizontal company. Oh, company sorry, is. Sorry. One minute. One minute. I didn't check that. So it is BV divided by root 3 times BV. Cancel this and this. So delta should be equal to pi by 6. Is there an option? So fifth one. Yes. Pi by 6 is the answer. <clears throat> So assume that a motor in which the coils have total resistance of 10 ohm is supplied by a voltage of 120 volt. When the motor is running at its maximum speed, the back EMF is 70. Current in the coils when the motor is turned on and when it has reached a maximum speed R. So how to solve this? So I is equal to V by R. So when the motor was turned on, 120 volt will come into picture divided by the resistance of 10. So answer will be 12 ampere. So which options have 12? So it should either be C or D. Now, when it has reached a maximum speed, right, there is a back EMF of 70. So what should I do to the value of current? I dash will be equal to, from 120, 70 is reduced. So 50 divided by 10 ohm. So answer will be 5 ampere. So the right option would be D. <coughs> All right. <clears throat> Next. So what is the answer for this one? The voltage has got decreased. So you should use a So the power rating is 220 volt here. That grinder is taken to the US, right? There, they get only 110 volt supply. So to use the grinder, what is he supposed to use? Do, uh, he needs to use a step up transformer or a step down transformer? The step up. So step up transformer with turn ratio of how much? What is turn ratio? One is to two. two by N1. Yes. So he has to use it with one is to two. So electromagnetic waves are produced by simple. Sir, in the previous question, mm -hmm. voltage is reduced, right? No, no, no. See, there is a grinder which is bought in India, which, which can get operated only at 220 volt. Now it has got shifted to US. There we have only 120, 110 volt supply. So to increase this 110 volt to 220 for this grinder to function, what are we supposed to use? Nitish. Step up. Read the question. Got it. Huh? Sir, but the turns ratio is wrong, right? Yeah, turns ratio should actually be 2 is to 1. Yes, sir. Yes. There's a mistake. It should actually be 2 is to 1. <clears throat>
So electromagnetic waves are produced by eighth one. Accelerated charged particle, that's the answer. So ray of light is incident in a medium of refractive index mu1 is partially reflected and refracted at the boundary of another medium of refractive index mu2. Okay. And partially reflected, if this angle is I, this angle will be I and the refracted ray is like this. If the reflected and the refracted rays are perpendicular to each other, then what should be the angle of incidence? <clears throat> Tell me. So how to solve this? So if I take this to be R, So first thing, what will I do? If this is mu1, this is mu2. So mu1 times sin i is equal to mu2 times sin r. Accepted? Right. So sin i is equal to mu2 divided by mu1 into sin r. So what is the relation between i and r? This is 90 minus i. So this will be i then how much will this be? R will be 90 minus I. So if I substitute 90 minus I here, I'll get mu2 by mu1 into sine of 90 minus I. And here I have sine A. Sine of 90 minus I is going to be cos I. So what will I get? Tan I will be equal to mu2 divided by mu1. So I will be tan inverse of mu2 by mu1. Actually, this is a concept from wave optics known as Brewster's law, but it is not necessary. You need to know the concept to solve this problem because here it is given as a statement where you need to use the basic Snell's law to solve it. Okay, Just for your knowledge, those who are writing the competitive exam. So this part is deleted. It comes under the concept of polarization. Okay. <clears throat> So this law is called as Brewster's law, where the reflected and the refracted ray will be perpendicular to each other. And the angle of instance is called as the angle of polarization. Okay. So I hope this is clear, right? Is there anyone having doubt in this problem? Okay. So the wavefront of a distant source of unknown shape is approximately. Answer. Plane. Correct. So ultraviolet radiation of 6.2 electron volt falls on an aluminum surface of work function 4.2 electron volt. Then the kinetic energy of the fastest electron is approximately. So H nu is equal to W naught plus Ke max. So 6.2 minus 4.2 should be the answer. So 6.2 minus 4.2 is 2. So 2 is in terms of electron volt. Converting it to joule, you will have something like this. So 2 into 1.6 is 3.2 into 10 power minus 19 joule. <clears throat> right. The total energy of an electron in the second excited state of hydrogen atom is minus 1.51 electron volt. The kinetic energy and the potential energy of the electron in the state are respectively R. So we know that kinetic energy is equal to <clears throat> negative of the energy of the electron in the orbit and potential energy is equal to 2 times the total energy. So 2 times the total energy. So kinetic energy should be 1.51. So 1.51, there are two options. So obviously it can't be negative. Oh, so minus E, no, sorry. Yeah. And uh, what about the potential energy? 1.51 into 2. So how much will be the answer? Minus 3.2. So option B should be the right answer. Hmm, that is the right answer. <clears throat> 
So 13th one is easy. Directly you can see 931 mega electron volt. <coughs> yellow light is used in a single slit diffraction experiment with a slit width of 0 0.6 mm. The yellow light is replaced with X-rays and the pattern will reveal that. What will happen? See, for diffraction pattern to appear, what is the necessary condition? Size of the opening should be size of the opening should be comparable to the wavelength of light. Right. If you look at the width, it is going to be 0 0.6 millimeter. Right. So what is going to be the wavelength of an X-ray? It is somewhere around 1 angstrom. Right. Or it is going to be 10 power minus 7 millimeter. They both are not in a comparable state. Hence, there will be no pattern of diffraction taking place. So this is a question based on EM waves and wave optics together. Fifteenth one. In a compound microscope, the intermediate image produced is real, inverted, and magnified. Sixteen. The energy gap between the conduction and valence band is of the order of 0 0.07 electron volt. It is a insulate. Semiconductor. It should actually be a semiconductor, no? See, 0. Yes. Point the 0 0.7 should be a semiconductor. 0 0.07 it will be a conductor. It will be a conductor actually. Because 0 0.7 electron volt comes for silicon, which is a semiconductor. It is 0 0.07 here, which is almost equated to 0. Okay, hence it should be a conductor. I hope everybody has made a note of it. For germanium, it will be 1.1. So, a charged particle is moving in a uniform magnetic field in a circular path of radius R. When the energy of the particle is doubled, the new radius will be. So, what is the relation? So, R is equal to root of 2m into k divided by q into b. I hope you remember this formula. Right. So R dash will be equal to how much when the value of energy is doubled? It will become root 2 times R. So answer should be A. So electric lines of force are obviously they are imaginary. They don't exist at all. They are only sensed. So dipole of dipole moment P is present in a uniform magnetic field E, write the value of the angle between P and E for which the torque experienced by the dipole is minimum. So torque will be minimum when the value of theta is 0 or 180. Okay, find the poten find the ratio of the potential differences that must be applied across the parallel or series combination of two identical capacitors so that the energy stored in the two cases is the same. So listen. Parallel, right? First of two identical capacitors. If I call this as V dash, and if I call the potential here as V, so energy here will be. <clears throat> half into 2c into v square. Energy here will be half into c by 2 into v dash square. So they both are supposed to be equal. Half and half are gone. C and c are gone. So v parallel v series. So vp square divided by vs square is equal to 1 divided by 4, which implies vp divided by vs is equal to half. Ratio will be 1 is to 2. Okay. So define the term 
drift velocity and obtain the relation. So this is the derivation which I've already explained. Right. See derivation part, I'm not explaining it. You can refer to the video. So derivation. Define the terms threshold frequency and stopping potential in the study of photoelectric emission. So what is threshold frequency? It is a minimum frequency that is required to eject an electron from the metal surface. And what is stopping potential? What is the stopping potential? It is a minimum negative energy that should be given to the anode in order to stop the, in order to stop even the fast moving electron. Uh, sir, hmm, tell me. Now. Can we write uh, the minimum positive potential given to the receiver? Uh, but stopping potential is uh, negative only. No? Only then it can stop an electron. See, stopping potential, generally what happens is the cathode will be negatively charged only. But what happens to the anode part? The anode, you will give positive charge. That is how you draw the graphs, you remember? With anode potential. Yes, sir. So this side is positive, this side it is negative. You get the stopping potential on the negative side only, you know. So you need to mention that word negative. That is a keyword. Don't write it. Sir, sir. Uh, okay. retarding potential. Uh, so retarding potential. Sir, uh, retarding potential and stopping potential are same, right? Stopping night has come to rest, clear. retarding night is still moving. Nitish. Sir, can we retarding. Say, uh, say like, like the retarding potential given to the acceptor plate to stop the fast moving electron? Oh, that also I can say, but why do you want to use a retarding? Like uh, use the word negative. Okay, retarding means I'm, I, I'm able to understand that you're trying to say that the word negative. But why to go in a confusing manner? See, maybe oh. I'll accept it, but... The examiner who's doing it, if the key, if the keyword is given as negative in their answer sheet, they'll strike it off, even though you write it as retarding. I am able to understand what you're saying. Your context is right. But I'm saying you're risking with the okay. answer. Got it? Yeah. <clears throat> so write the important limitations of Rutherford's nuclear model of yet. Tell me. So first thing, what did he state? He told that electrons are going to revolve in a circular orbit. But according to new, uh, according to Rutherford's model, if the electron is revolving in a circular orbit, what should have happened? It should have emitted energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, right? So it should continuously radiate the energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And the particle will start falling into a spiral path and fall into the nucleus. Right, due to which the stability of the atom is lost. And the second point is, obviously, it could not give an explanation to the line spectra that was observed in the hydrogen atom. Right, that is why the Bohr's model came into existence. Right? So for the other points, <coughs> it referred to the notes that I have given. Next. Define atomic mass unit. So atomic mass unit, you have been learning from your ninth standard. So it's the mass of one twelfth of a carbon twelve atom. Right. Then what is an electron volt? Electron volt is the amount of energy gained by an electron when it is accelerated through a potential difference of one volt. Right. Now what is the relation between them? An atomic mass unit is equal to 931.5 mega electron volt. 1 AMU is equal to 931.5 mega electron volt. Okay. Sir, uh, in the MCQ, you ticked the 931 MEV. Is there an option of 931.5? If that was the right answer, 931 is That is why I ticked it. Uh, okay. 931 or 931.5, they are closer value, they are accepted. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> so you go with the nearest value that is not there in MCQ, but the value according to your textbook is 931.5. Okay. Write any two characteristics of electromagnetic waves. So what are the two characteristics of electromagnetic waves? So first thing, they're produced by an accelerating charge particle. Secondly, what can you say? Electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature. Right? So these are the two. Sorry? Non-mechanical waves. Yeah, they do not require a medium for propagation. They are not mechanical waves. You can say that also. Give one use of radio waves and the microwaves. So radio wave, where is it used? Obviously in the communication purpose. Right, they are using the radio and the TV communication. Obviously, we use it in the cell phones as well. All are radio frequencies. Next is microwave. So where are microwaves used? Use it at our home, right? For cooking purposes. Right. So what is the answer for the 26th one? So person with a normal near point using a compound microscope with objective of focal length 8 millimeter and an eyepiece of focal length 2.5 centimeter can bring an object placed 9 millimeters from the objective in sharp focus. What is the separation between the two lenses? Calculate the magnifying power of the microscope. So what do you mean by sharp focus? That has something to tell us. <coughs> sharp focus means the image is formed at least distance of distinction. <coughs> that is at the near point. So obviously, how are you going to proceed? Collect all the data. So U naught is how much? Yes, I need you to speak. Sorry? Nine millimeters. Okay, so here everything is in centimeter. You want to convert millimeter to centimeter or the vice versa? Which one you want to deal with? So centimeter, so millimeter into centimeter. Okay, okay then how much is it in terms of centimeter? 0.9 Okay, there is something else I need to add to this. What is it? Minus. Okay. Yes, that is right. So you notice this one. Since the lenses are convex lenses, focal lengths of both the lenses are going to be positive. So focal length of the objective is going to be 8 millimeter, which is going to be 0 0.8 centimeter with a positive value. So can you tell me what is the value of V0? One minute time, calculate and tell me how much is the value of V0. If anybody has already done, please let me know. <laughs> so how will you do it? 1 by V minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F. Put a naught as the suffix. So I'm getting 72 by uh, 170 centimeters. So. Is it for V naught? I don't think so. Here the value is given is something else. Anyways, let me check. 1 by V0 is equal to minus 1 divided by. So this will be plus 0 0.9 now. Huh? Is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.8. So 1 divided by V0 is equal to 10 by 8 minus 10 by 9. So 10 into 1 by 8 minus 1 by 9 is 1 by 72. No? So V0, you should get 7.2 centimeter. Sir, I know where I went wrong, sir. What it? You took, I think yes. you took a place. Yes, sir. So V0 is 7.2 centimeter. Mm, now, this V0 is with respect to whom? So if suppose I draw a line diagram like this. This is the objective. This is going to be the eyepiece. Here the object is placed at 0 0.9 millimeter it is formed at a distance of 7.2 centimeter forget the scale I'm not drawn exactly to the scale okay this form somewhere over here now how to calculate 
so they have told where the object is uh, where the image is formed it is formed at the least distance of distinction now you have two more data with respect to the it so again applying the lens formula 1 by ve minus 1 by ue is equal to 1 by ft 1 by ve is how much correct a solunga minus 25 minus 25 correct minus i don't know what is the value of object distance that's what i need to find is equal to 1 divided by fe is how much 2.5 adha ah 2.5 so which implies 1 by u is equal to minus 1 by 25 minus 1 by 2.5 apa 10 by 25 can i write it <coughs> correct ah 10 by 25 so how much will be the answer minus 11 by 25 ah so u e will be 25 divided by 11 with a negative sign so this will be 25 divided by 11 cm <coughs> now what is going to be the distance between both can you calculate it 25 divided by 11 should be how much 2 point something no so this is 7.2 this is 2 point something adding both according to the value given here your answer should be 9.47 cm okay I'm not sure if you remember the answer that you have got. So this is the value nine point two four seven. That is the first question. Second is calculating the magnifying power. Calculate the magn uh, magnifying power of the microscope. So magnifying power is calculated as V naught divided by U naught into one plus D divided by F T. So V naught is what? Seven point two divided by U naught is point nine. One plus twenty-five divided by two point five. So this goes ten times. So seven point two by seventy-two by nine is going to be eight. Eight into eleven. Answer should be eighty-eight. <clears throat> so it is eighty-eight times magnified. Okay. I hope you understood. Define the torque acting on a dipole of dipole moment P placed in a uniform electric field. Express it in the vector form and point out the direction. So this is a derivation, right? So what is going to be the torque? Actually, you need not derive. They didn't ask you to derive. You need to define it. Torque is equal to P e sine theta, or you can write it as P vector cross e vector. And how does it act? It acts in the direction perpendicular to both. Dipole moment and the electric field. What happens if the field is non-uniform? So, what is what is going to happen if the field is non-uniform? It starts experiencing force along with torque. What would happen if the external electric field is increasing parallel to the field, and if it is increasing anti-parallel to No change at all. No, no. If the value of electric field is increasing in the direction of dipole moment, so why did they give us? Because in this case, That's theta will be. No, no, no. What would happen if the electric field is increasing? Oh, yeah. It it should be zero. Parallel to theta will be zero, right? Yeah, yeah. It should be zero. Sir, so uh, any uh, displacement uh, from its initial position will produce more torque in case of anti-parallel, and uh... see that is how it works. No, see, if this is how the dipole is placed. This is positive charge. This is negative charge, right? So this is this is how the dipole moment is going to be. This is electric field. So what is the potential energy? P is equal to minus U is equal to minus P cos theta. So the so indirectly, Nitish, you are indirectly asking a question about the stable and the unstable equilibrium. Ah, uh, yes. Sir. Okay. So when is it said to be in a stable equilibrium? 
when energy is uh, minimum uh, when energy is minimum so for energy to be minimum it should be negative so theta should be 0 degrees if u is equal to minus pe cos theta if the energy is maximum if you put 180 here cos 180 will give you negative negative of negative will become positive energy will become maximum so that is why we say 180 degrees is the energy is the uh, <coughs> <coughs> condition for unstable equilibrium and zero degree is the condition for the stable equilibrium. Uh, sir, mm, tell me, bro. sir, the answer should be uh, the talk wouldn't change, right? Like, no, if no, it is no. No, one minute, one what hap what would happen if the external electric field is increasing? Is increasing parallel to the sir, see if there is already a and field which is not parallel and uh, we increase One the minute. field this is parallel no no what what would happen if the external field e this is the external field e is increasing parallel to p sir so the external field already exists which is not parallel to p but they are increasing only the component which is parallel so talk will not change no, 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 if the component is increasing, okay, let me think in your terms. So this, this is going to be the direction of P and this is going to be the direction of electric field. Okay, let's assume this is the scenario. Now, if I resolve it into two components, you're saying this is one of the components. Okay, let me assume that this is theta, for instance. Okay, so this is E cos theta or this is a component in the direction of electric field. Okay, let me call it as E dash. Mm. Okay, one minute, wait. <clears throat> so if this is P vector, and let me say this is E vector, if I take this to be theta, this is going to be E cos theta, and this will be E sin theta. So P into E sin theta is what is contributing to the torque. Yeah, the question is actually slightly ambiguous. What would happen if the external electric field is increasing? Okay. And if you understand it, it is increasing and it is parallel to P vector, then the torque should be zero only. See, uh, uh, Subhraji, even if you take the direction, if you resolve it into components, right, it is an E cos theta component that is going to happen, that is going to exist. Right. So when E cos theta component is increasing, right, when E cos theta is increasing, can I say that the electric field will also increase? So torque should be PE sin theta, where this E is going to be E dash, for instance, if I call the new value, because the dipole moment is not changing and let the torque be T dash, oh sorry, tau dash. Since this component is increasing, don't you think the resultant will also increase? If I take your condition into consideration. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yes, sir. according to your justification, torque should increase. Okay. So, according to your answer, yes, torque should increase, but the direction will be the same. But according to the way others have understood, they took that electric field is now acting in the direction parallel and anti parallel. In both the cases, torque will be zero. That is also right. Yeah, the question is ambiguous. Okay. It is ambiguous. So, for this part, you should get marks. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> mm, write an expression for the magnetic moment associated with the current carrying coil of radius R having n turns. Answer. N i pi R square. It is N i pi r square capital r square correct okay you write an n cap because what is the formula for magnetic dipole moment n i a right uh, consider the above mentioned coil in the y z plane with its center at the origin derive the expression for the value of magnetic field due to it at a point x comma zero comma zero so due to a point 
on it at a distance x comma 0 comma 0 find the magnetic field this is again a derivation so what should be the answer b will be equal to mu naught ni r square r square divided by so smaller is only given 2 into a square sorry not a square r square plus x square the whole power 3 by 2 sir, is the uh, circular coil it should again uh, should be 1 mm, derive an expression for the value of above mentioned coil Coil, and I have told this many times, loop now one turn, coil is in turns. Nitish, loop yes. is one. Coil is always wound multiple times. Yes. Yeah. So you should not write this answer and leave, you should derive it actually. Is there anyone who, done, who doesn't know how to derive it for this problem? Is there anyone who doesn't know the derivation? So using Bayard server flow, that to derive. That one, that one. You have to use that integration and then do it. You will have so one could you do it once? Uh, it will take time. Da. So I'll do one thing. It will take at least 15 minutes. I'll do one thing. I have a video on it. I'll send it. I'll upload it today itself. I've done the detailed. Okay, so, uh, so, because I did not use integration, but I got the same answer. Integration means it's a simple integration. You need to take with integral of 0 to pi. How did you do it then? You use sigma. Sir, no, sir. Uh, only integration only one step I use. That is uh, that d only one vector. step. So it's, not, R it's, vector not really it's not very big integration, only one step. If you take okay, the proper limit. Then I think it's right. Okay, sir. Yeah. Then tell me only one thing. How many how many elements did you consider? Two sir, or one? Two. Ah, two means then your integral limit should be from zero to what did you take the limit as? Zero to pi r. Did you take this? Sir, no, I did not do it this way. Okay, then how did you do? Then just give me the outline. I'll tell you whether it is right or wrong. Sir, first uh, I took one element. So for uh -huh. one element, uh, it'll be uh, like that. And then I found out like uh, since Com I took Com mu naught upon 4 pi into uh, i into dl vector across r vector. Okay. So uh, like dl vector, uh, like the angle between them is 90 degree. So it'll be right. i dl uh, r oh. upon... I I understood. Uh, yes, sir. And then logical. at last, I took uh, since the all the other components will cancel out, only the uh, horizontal component uh, or Thanks. the component which is parallel to the axis of the loop would remain. Okay, since, you mentioned uh, so the logic. Only the cos theta would remain. That's right. I mean, maybe if, if you have taken it like so, you didn't get it like this. No, two times dB cos theta is not what you got. Am I right? You didn't get something like this. Yes, sir. You wrote that yes, maybe cos theta, provided you took this as cos theta. Is that right? Yes, sir. Then it should, then it's right. Okay. You, if you see, only thing is next time when you're writing the exam, correct yourself. If you're writing two times dB cos theta, ensure you're putting this limit. If you see, logic is simple, right? If you're taking only one element, okay, <clears throat> then the limits will be from 0 to 2 pi, 2 pi r. If you're taking two elements, Limits will get halved, 0 to pi r. Three elements will get reduced even. <coughs> but three we don't take, we take either one or two. Are you able to understand? Yes. So if you take three elements, it'll be 2 pi r by 3, like that it keeps going. Anyways, yeah. So obtain the equivalent capacitance of the network in the figure for 300 volt supply, determine the charge and voltage across this. Science of So how are these three capacitors connected? C2 and C3 are in series. series. So series means how much will be the 
value, 100 picofarad, C1 plus C2 by 2, no? Correct? Huh? So it become 100. Now this 100 and this 100, how are they? They are connected in parallel. So what will happen to the equivalent resistance? <clears throat> This will be 200, this will be 100, and here you have 300 volt. How is this 100 and 200 connected? They are in <coughs> series. So what will be the answer? 200 into 100 divided by 300. So it will be 200 by 3 picofarad. So that is going to be the equivalent capacitance. But they ask the charge on each capacitor. Right. So how to calculate it? Sir, uh, the effective charge will be equal to the uh, charge on C4. Correct. What is the effective charge? Two is equal to CV. 200 by 3 into 300. Into 10 power? Minus 12 is that. Let's not forget that. Into 10 power minus 12. Okay, let's let's write it as pico coulomb only. Okay. So how much will this be? 2 into 10 power 4 pico coulomb. That is going to be the effective charge. Right. So uh, see then, then calculate okay, the potential. The voltage. Yeah, this is the voltage across C4. How much is the voltage across C4? Q is equal to CV. V is equal to Q by C. So 2 into 10 power 4 divided by hundred picofarad. So it will be 200 volt. Are you able to understand? So out of the 300 volt, what has happened? 200 volt is taken by C4. So first let me draw this, redraw the circuit so that you understand it better. So this is C1. This is C2, C3 and this is C4. Now tell me, this 300 volt is there, no? Out of this 300 volt, 200 is taken by this. So here, how much will it be? It will be 100. So out of 100, how much will be the voltage across C1? It will be 100 only. Correct. So what would be the voltage across C2 and C3? 50. Correct. So it will be 50 and 50. Right. Since you know the potential difference, they, they ask the voltage across each capacitor. Since now you know the voltage across each capacitor, will you be able to calculate the charge? On C4, we have already calculated 2 into 10 power 4 picofarad. That, com that comes out to be 2 into 10 power minus 8 coulomb. <clears throat> Similarly, calculate for C1, C2 and C3 also. Okay. So using the same logic, Q is equal to C. You will use that formula. So answer would be... Um, for Q1, it is 10 power minus 8 coulomb. So C1, it is 10 power minus 8 coulomb. C2, it is 10 power minus 8 coulomb. C3, also it is 10 power minus 8 coulomb. And C4, it is going to be 2 into 10 power minus 8 coulomb. <clears throat> Good problem. I hope you could understand. <coughs> hmm. Define the term self inductance. Hmm. So, self inductance means what?
means it's a phenomena right it's a property so it is a property where an opposing current is generated in the coil due to the change in its own current is called as self inductance so what about the si unit si unit will be entry so obtain the expression for the mutual inductance of two long coax cell solenoids s1 and s2 wound one over the other each of length l and radius being r1 r2 n1 n2 be the number of turns per unit length given a current i is set up in the outer solenoid s2 So there is a bigger coil, there is a smaller coil. Current is through the. So if I take the inner coil to be one and outer coil to be two, so through the inner coil, if I observe, then M one two is equal to how much? What is M one two equal to? N one five one divided by I two. So N one is <clears throat> small N one into L. What is five one? Magnetic field produced due to the second coil, which is mu naught into N two into I two into area of the first coil. What is the area of the first coil? Pi R one square. The whole divided by I two. I two and I two will get cancelled. So this will be equal to mu naught n one n two pi r one square l. Ah, uh, sir. Tell me. Sir, can we define self inductance as the EMF induced across a across an inductor when the unit change in uh, current takes ah. place in unit time? Correct. Correct. Because E is equal okay. to L into dI by dt. You know, you are defining it according to this. dI by dt, you are taking it to be one. So then EMF yes, will be this is it, correct. Okay, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Next. So the instantaneous EMF is this much applied across a pure capacitor of six thirty seven microfarad. Find the instantaneous current. So what is the value of instantaneous current? I is equal to E divided by X C. Right. What is the value of X C? X C will be one by omega C. So E into omega into C. So I will be equal to instantaneous E M F is hundred sine three hundred and fourteen T into omega values how much? Three hundred and fourteen into C value six hundred and thirty-seven into ten power minus six. <clears throat> right. So right. The instant. Uh, I know. I naught should be equal to E naught into omega C. Which one? I naught, like a maximum current. But they didn't ask maximum, no. Maximum current is hundred, huh? <clears throat> they didn't ask maximum current here. They asked only instant. No, sir. Ah, uh, we need to give instantaneous <coughs> current in the equation, right? Uh mm huh. -hmm. So in the form of E naught sine omega T, we need to give I naught sine omega. Okay, that's what you're saying. Okay, I will be equal to then. Yeah, then it will change because there is a phase difference. No, correct. So I will be equal to I naught sine of omega t plus pi by two. So it should actually be I is equal to I naught cos omega t. This is what you're saying. So it should actually be in terms of cos. So here I have to change it as cos. Guys, yes, I hope it is clear. Sir, or if we simply write it as uh, omega t plus pi by two is fine, right? Uh, yeah, that is also. Fine. Yeah, yeah, that all that is also. Okay, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this is one thing. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
Now, instantaneous power is basically what is instantaneous power? E into I. So, E is how much? Hundred sine three hundred and fourteen t into uh, this i naught value. How much are you getting? I naught is equal to e naught divided by one by omega c. So e naught is how much? E naught is hundred into omega is three hundred and fourteen into c is six thirty seven into ten power minus six. So how much is the value coming out to be? So this is approximately given as 20 ampere. If that's the case, 20 into, you can write this as cos omega t. That is cos 314t. So multiply these two, that will give you the answer. <clears throat> okay. Next, what is the third part they're asking? The frequency of power. So what is going to be the frequency of power? Ah. So, frequency of power, I need to write it as a single function of sine. So, what I'll do is I'll take a zero from here and push it here. So, 1000 into 2 sine theta cos theta is going to be sine of 2 theta, that is 628t. So, what is going to be the frequency of power? So, frequency of power will be 628 radians per second. Next part the maximum energy stored in the capacitor. So what is the maximum energy stored in the capacitor? If it is half C E naught square. So half into C is 637 into 10 power minus 6 into E naught square is 100 square. That is going to be 10 power 4. <coughs> so how much will this come to? 3, 1, Six, six, eight, no, three, one, eight point five. So three, one, eight point five into ten power minus two. So this will be the maximum energy state. This is also a good problem. Okay. Next. So there is again a derivation. I can refer the video. This part we will do. The intensity at the central maximum, maxima in Young's double set experiment is I Q. Actually, this should actually be I naught. Okay, let's take it as I Q itself, for instance. Find out the intensity at a point where the path difference is lambda by 6. So, how to solve this? If I take both the rays to be of the same intensity i, the maximum intensity is how much? <clears throat> so maximum intensity will be 4i. Right? Because what will you get? i plus i plus 2i into cos phi is what you're going to get. So at the central maximum, what will happen? Phi will be zero. So I plus I plus 2I is going to give you a 4I. <coughs> so this I max, this IQ is actually four times I. Okay. Now if the path difference is lambda by six, then how do you calculate the intensity at that point? Sir, are uh... I plus I plus uh, root 2 I. Mm -hmm. Two times root I into root I. Two times root I1 I2. Get like this letter. A square. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. Got it, no? Yes, sir. Uh. <coughs> Say the 4 I am. So, when the path difference is lambda by 6, what would be the phase difference? So, simple, right? you need not think much. So, resultant intensity is equal to I plus I plus 
2i times cos of if you are able to find this phi value for the corresponding phase difference that's enough path difference so what is the relation phi is equal to or delta x is equal to lambda by 2 pi multiplied with phi so what is the value of delta x in the initial case lambda by 6 huh? So lambda by 6 is equal to lambda by 2 pi into phi lambda and lambda are gone. This goes 3 times. So phi will be equal to pi by 3. So if I take this value and substitute it here, cos pi by 3 and 2 will get cancelled. You will get the answer as 3i. <coughs> Similarly, using the same logic, can you calculate for the other two values and tell me? What is the value for lambda by 4? So lambda by 4 answer should be 2i. For lambda by 3, it should be i. <coughs> so lambda by 4, it should be 2i. Lambda by 3, it should be i. Right. So, but i is not given in the question. They have given only i naught, right? So, how do you write everything in terms of i naught? See, if 4i is i naught, right? If 4i is i naught, then what will be the value of i? i naught by 4. So, here it will be 3i naught by 4. Here it will be i naught by 2. And here it will be i naught by 4. These are the values. Okay. Next. So this is a textbook problem. So what is the answer for the first one? What is the net outward flux through each flat face? So it should be 200 into area. What is the area? Pi into R square. So 5 into 10 power minus 2, the whole square. Right. So that is a net outward flux through each flat face. What is the flux through the side of the cylinder? So through the side of the cylinder, how will you calculate the flux? What is going to be the answer? Zero. 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 What is the net outward flux through the cylinder? Two times this value. <laughs> because the electric field in each direction is in the opposite direction. So here the flux is positive, here also it is positive, they will get added. So answer should be two times this value. So what are the net charge inside the cylinder? So once you calculate the total flux, so total flux divided into epsilon naught. So total flux multiplied with epsilon naught will be the charge enclosed inside. I hope you guys could solve this. Right. So I'm not reading the passage. Tell me what is the answer for the 34th. The direction of magnetic field due to a current is in the direction perpendicular to both TR and TR. Hmm. The magnetic field due to a current in a straight wire of length L at a point when it's perpendicular bisector at a distance r is inversely proportional, what happens? So in option D. Option D. Yeah. No, sir, B for ball. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So two, two straight wires are set parallel to each other. Each carries a current I in the same direction. The separation between them is 2R. The intensity of the magnetic field midway between them is? Zero. Zero. Yes. So what about the fourth one? A long straight wire carries a current along the z-axis for any two points in the xy plane. Which of the following is true? <laughs> carries a current along z-axis. There should have been a comma. Magnetic field. Magnetic field. Magnetic field. 
for any two points in the xy plane what would happen uh, sir hmm. sir if the two points considered are not the same points then it should be option b right b for ball mm, the direction of magnetic fields are the same see actually the question is ambiguous for any two points in the xy plane which of the following is always false Oh, it's always false. Sorry, I was thinking it's true. Then it is right. So, which of the following is always false? The magnetic fields are equal. They cannot be equal. No, it depends on where the point is. The directions of magnetic field will be the same. No, at any point you take, the direction of magnetic field will be the same. Similarly, the magnitude of the magnetic fields are equal. A and C are almost the same. Similarly, the fourth point is the field at a point is opposite to the other one. No. Sir, uh, can you explain how the direction is changed? Because you apply the right hand thumb rule and see. No? Sir, but at the point we a take the tangent to know, sir. Naturally correct. Yeah, one side it will be into the plane, other side it should be out of the plane. The directions of magnetic field are same. Which of the following is always false? Answer should be B only then. Sir, uh, they are considering the two points, sir. Two points are different, sir. Like D can That's what be it depends on where you consider those two points, no? It depends on where you consider those two points. Sir, sir why is this... B false, sir? No, I'm just seeing, I'm just checking out the options. If I take this to be the X axis, Y axis, X dash, and this to be Y dash, okay, the field, let's say, the current carrying conductor is placed at the origin and the current is into the plane. Um, for any two points in the XY plane, no, I think uh, my directions of magnetic field will be the same. Only. It's the same. Apply right hand thumb rule and see. Place your thumb in the direction perpendicular to the plane of the paper and curl your fingers and see. Anywhere you see it is going to be in the same direction. Sir, but at a point we take the tangent, right? No need. No, why do you want to take a tangent and all those things? Here you're not drawing the field lines or anything. You're just saying the direction. The direction, your right hand thumb rule says it's the same. Sir, but suppose in uh, same which you've drawn the diagram, we consider a point that is two units above the in the positive y-axis and two units in the negative y-axis with okay. x being zero. Mm -hmm. Then the direction would be different, right? In the point which is in the positive y-axis, so you're drawing it to tangent at the particular. Yes, sir. Then the direction is different, right? Mm, see, that is one way. Or you can say that <clears throat> the field lines are in the clockwise. And you see, actually, according to me, every option seems to be wrong only because magnetic fields are equal, not possible. That depends on what point you are considering. For any two points is what they have told, right? Magnetic fields are equal, not possible. If I take two different points, then when the perpendicular distance is going to change, the magnetic field will not be the same. So that is false according to me. Directions, okay. Okay, your logic is right. If I take the directions to be tangents, that is wrong. Again, the sir, third option speaks about magnitudes of the magnetic field. They can also not be the same. The field at one point is opposite to the other point. Sir, but it sir, I have an be, argument here. Sir. Uh, two, right? Mm -hmm. like, Which one? Uh, a, sir, option. Like uh, if a, you consider, uh, if a, I consider sir. always. If I consider this word always, which of the following is always false. Okay. If that is the case, the directions of magnetic field. Okay. Uh, so, Bridget, let's come to your point. You took one point on y axis, right? Let me take another point on yes. y axis. Let's say in this case, the directions are same. It is not always false. You're able to understand. So, the, yes. Yeah, so the, but when I talk about the magnetic fields, right, the strength is different. 
similar is the case with the magnitudes of the see they both actually mean the same the magnetic fields are equal obviously magnitude of magnetic fields are equal they both mean the same and the field at one point is opposite to the other that is also possible if i take i can show you two different points where they are going to be equal I mean in opposite direction see actually this doesn't make sense for this it's ambiguous leave it <clears throat> by its our clock can be expressed alternatively as obviously as ampere sir <coughs> right the last question tell me the convex and the concave lens separated by distance are put in contact the focal length of the combinations the convex and concave lens separated by distance are put are then put in contact the focal length of the combination increases so 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 again from why tell me this question it's not applicable for you because you don't have the formula for what happens when they are separated by distance t there'll be a minus d divided by f1 f2 something like that so that formula is not there so for this also you'll get marks okay next if two lenses of power plus 1.5 and plus 1.d are placed in contact that the effective power is obviously first answer 2.5 2.5 The power of lenses plus phi doctor than the focal length is. They are asking in centimeters, so be careful. Under divided by five is going to be twenty centimeters. Yes. So two thin lenses of focal lengths ten and five are kept in contact. The power of the combination is plus. So is it minus? Focal, yes. Their focal length. So focal length is ten minutes. Power will be plus ten, and this will be minus twenty. So answer will be minus ten. i hope you understood they have given the focal lens but they are asking the power of the combination uh, a convex lens of focal in 25 cm is placed coaxially with concave lens of focal in 20 cm then the system will act as you assume that they both are in contact sir so convex lens focal length is this much so what is going to be the power four concave lens focal length is 20 so power will be 5 so for convex lens it is positive concave lens it is negative so the combination of this two is going to give you minus 1 diopter minus 1 means what kind of a lens is that it's a diverging lens <clears throat> got it so what are all the questions i told you for which marks will be given Tell me the numbers, man. Sir, I have a doubt in one of the questions. <clears throat> Tell me. Seventeenth question. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Like Seventeen. you wrote, yes, sir. Ah, uh, you wrote a uh, root of two m m m k by. Oh, that formula, huh? This one, okay, no. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, how are you getting this formula, sir? Like, mm. see, R, R is equal MB to MB by, by QB. QB, but kinetic. See, the relation between kinetic energy and momentum is k is equal to p square by two m. This is linear yes, momentum, sir. so p is equal to root of two m into k. Okay, sir. Got it. Yes, sir. <coughs> So, what are the questions I told you? Which marks will be given? Do you remember? Sir, only in case based question, two questions. Only in case based, sir. Huh? 
So which one? Thirty fourth. Thirty four two and thirty five. Hello, thirty four la fourth no. Thirty four four and thirty five la. Thirty five one. Okay. And uh, so I hope this is clear. No, I think uh, comparatively this paper was easy. Yes or no? Sir, no the, sir, the momentum uh, you told right that P is five. Yeah. Yeah, sir, uh, phi square by 2m, this is one of the derivation, right? Small derivation. Yeah, this is from your mechanics, the classical mechanics. See, kinetic energy is half mv square. Momentum is mv. So, p square will be m square v square. Divide p square with k. m square v square divided by half mv square. v square and v square are gone. m and m are gone. 2 will go up. Oh, sorry, m square v square. 1m is gone. M square, V square, uh, V square and V square are lost. One M is gone. Two malapoidma, two M idma. So, K will be equal to P square divided by two M. That's the answer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Clear. No more doubt, we can wind up. Shall we? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll see you. Thank you, sir. Sir. Ah. Sir. Sir, case based la 34th law doubt, sir. Case based la 34th law doubt. Sir, other the second and third can you explain, sir? Answer if you want. Either a thirty fourth one. Second and the formula, no? Ah, okay. Then third, sir. If it is zero. Because see, if this is there, both the currents are in the same direction. You, can you apply right hand thumb rule at your place and tell me what will be the direction of magnetic field due to the first conductor at point P, which is exactly the midway? One right hand thumb. Oh. One will be inward, one will be out. Either uh, inward. First wire inward, second out. Second outward. Uh. And yes, since the value of current in both the same, Distance is same, magnitude will be same. Huh? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. They get nullified. Got it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. <coughs> the oh. second one, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this one, sir. Sir, mm -hmm. they're asking the formula for straight current carrying wire, right? State current carrying wire or finite length. So, what will be the formula for it? See? And, uh, so it will be this thing, no? Mu naught i divided by four pi r into sine alpha plus sine beta. When you're writing it like this, ah, okay, sir. Yeah. If I, the distance is very much greater than the value of L. Upon alpha beta kumbo the this will be root of r square plus l square. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Up a sine alpha in our L divided by root of R square plus L square. When R is very much greater than L, you can approximate R to, uh, you can approximate R square plus L square to R square. Uh. Upper sine alpha will be L by L R. By R. Yes. Upper sine beta would be something like L. By. L is the exact. Uh. If this is X and this is L minus X, X by R and is L minus X divided by R and So this R will get multiplied with this R to give you R square. 
Sir, for the third, if they are not same, which formula should you use, sir? Which is not same? Like direction or distance, if one of them changes, formula, which... Same formula you will use. Direction ko formula ko samandha mein illa. Sir, no, is... sir. Uh, they are given long, sir. Long na la, it will be mu naught i divided by 2 pi r. No, he is asking about direction. Formula, yes. Yeah. Formula is all and direction. Yes. Now, when I get the direction where I put it, then I know formula is going to be asking. That is what I'm trying to say. I mean, in a direction, put it alone. The formula will not change, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. But if the distance of one wire uh, to be another changes, now it will be R different. R will change. R will change. Ah, R yes, sir. Okay, sir. so based on the denominator, come here, the value of B will be high. So, whichever ah, point. Yes. With whichever conductor the point P is close to, the magnetic field due to that conductor will dominate. For example, on out a clear point, suppose the question was modified like this. Okay, if the point P was here, I'll not sit and solve. If they say the yes. point P is closer to the first conductor, you told me due to the first conductor, it is into the plane and due to the second conductor, magnetic field is out of the plane. So my yes. final answer would have been into the plane. All of them. Okay, sir. Got it. Because that is dominating. Mm, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sir.